Hello my wonderful friends, Roger Mud Fossil University once again talking about molecules and how do they form. What causes this tank, I believe from World War II, to turn into literally stone? You can see these army guys, or wherever they are over there, excavating this. Now the turret apparently was at ground level and they just decided to excavate and get the hell out of there probably and as they came down they saw holy smokes the thing has turned into stone I understand this and I will tell you why this is and we're going to go through how molecules form and this is going to be a shocker I can tell you that right now okay my friends I'm going to explain to you and it is a very simple process that tank was buried up to the turret and the, there's just mud you can see everywhere well in and it was obviously in a wet condition and it corroded literally the tank and invaded it and it is changing it literally molecularly adhering to the molecules that were originally the tank and changing them and it's called nucleophilic substitution very simple process don't freak out about the words this is a goose head that is the feathered pattern of the goose's head and that is the goose and these are literally the feathers that were on the goose and if we look at it in a microscope which i suppose we will uh, uh, we will see why these these are what's called keratins and keratogens and collagens and they are the web and the fabric of life that creates everything is skin and interstitial and fascia and organs and tanks <laughs> it's now we're going to get down to where we get into the metals because the metals are what is in your blood your blood literally and i am not kidding you literally and figuratively is a 100 percent continuously passing back and forth molecules that's called transitioning give me a couple of electrons take a couple of electrons back and forth back and forth I give you my carbon dioxide, you give me some oxygen, I give you urine, you give me this, you bup, 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 back and forth. I give you some vitamins, you give me some this, you give me, I'll take some of the toxins, I'll bring it down to the liver. This is what blood does, it's all it does. And it's just 24 hours a day. Well, what is in the blood is exactly this. This is the primary mover of your body is transition metals what does transition metal mean what is that big deal big big word transition means it changes it changes from one thing to the next well when you have these different metals in your body they don't just exist a chunk of iron floating around in there no that iron is attached to oxygen or some other atom that makes it semi-stable and as it flows through the body, some other particle in there, a zinc or something, may say, hey, you know, I could really use some of that oxygen. Can you pass it over to me and I'll give you whatever I have? And they do. They flip-flop. They transition back and forth. And then it gets cleaned out and your liver goes through your heart and your lungs. And you're blah, 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 blah. We're going to get deep into this. But the process is, it's called nucleophilic invasion, which substitutes a different molecule for something that was over here. So you, you originally, um, I, well, we're going to get so deep into it. I don't want to take little bits and pieces. It'll just confuse you and you get upset. <laughs> but trust me, metals are always continuously moving, taken, and given. That's why in the aqueous solution, and depending upon if it's got salts or acids in it, it's going to just, all kinds of things are going to change in here. And that is what exactly happened here. And now we're going to get into nucleophilic substitution. Because that's, that's how this foot, which is a no-toe, which is a new species nobody's ever known about before, trans, to transitioned. It's, it's always continuously moving molecules, stabilized by finding some other molecule that made it complete and had its full complement of electrons and then it says okay I have been substituted I no longer have to move through the body and give and take I am now 
stable. Boom. For thousands of years. And that's what we're looking at. Just like this right here. A stable human lung. DNA certified. I took the DNA out of a hole I drilled in here. Into where the red blood is. And and I had I sent it off. I took the sample. I sent it off. 100% human DNA. That is from the Great Flood. You see that flat piece there? It died like that. And the reason it disassociated from all of the rest of the body was it was in the salty waters of the Great Flood, and the salt preserved it, and the fascia pleura coating here, which is a rubbery separation layer, membrane layer, that keeps everything in your body separated from everything else. Disassociated from the rest of the body. The rest of the body just broke up into pieces, like little bones like that. That's a bone. And that's all, the complete bone. It's fractured. Same thing that, that's a goose head. And the same thing, it died flat. See the flat side? This is what we're up against here. Now, we need to learn this and pay attention to what we have here. I have new species, I have new creatures with all kinds of things, but they were never understood before because they said, oh, they're just rocks. Well, they're not just rocks. The, I'm going to explain to you right now the process of how they transition from a goose that could fly and flap and swim and do all kinds of things into a rock. I will prove it. Well, I have proven it, but I will. And I have the DNA, too. It's not just, I'm not guessing at anything I'm saying. And it all could be tested now, because now I was the first one in the world to have the DNA done on the ancient humans. Now it is... It's not, I don't know if they're doing it on ancient humans, I think they're refusing to, but they, they're doing all kinds of things with the DNA and they're finding in rocks and bogs and all kinds of things. Oh, no, we never expected this before. Well, I knew what I had and I forced the issue because nobody else would do it. And, uh, and it is what it is. So let's find out what nucleophilic substitution is all about. Okay, so we've talked about nucleophilic invasion. It's exactly what happened to Jim Burchill and Arlie Caudill's human head. And you can see, it even shows the cartilage and the nose splayed apart, and that's flesh. This is what they would call feldspar. Well, feldspar is nothing more than collagens and keratins and fabric of life that has been invaded by minerals and exactly what Jim Burchill told Scott Walter on TV and Scott Walter looked at his oh no no it's just sandstone head has never been alive absolutely certain of it and that's it 20 seconds it took him to d destroy all the research we did and uh, there's no question what it is now it could be fully understood and DNA certified, but we all know the black and the red blood and you know the cracks in the head and the bone black and I mean it's just what it is. So and Scott Walter should step up and say, you know, let's take another look at this. History Channel should too. They're the ones that did it right on TV in 20 seconds pretty much ruined all our research. After that everybody laughed at us. So uh, anyway, that's well, anyway. All right, let's just do this real quick. It's about nucleophilic substitution, and that's what happens with, with, you know, flesh, and it just, it just happens. Now, this is, um, you know, you got to have a little chemistry, but this makes it very simple. All it's telling you is nucleophilic substitution is a reaction, or a class of reactions, a class, a whole broad range of them, where an electron-rich nucleophile, electron-rich is over in here, they have a lot of extra electrons, attacks a positively charged electrophile to replace a leaving group. So one of these ones that has a lot of electrons forces itself in to stabilize something that normally would be given and taken in your transition metals and your, you know, the life processes. And then it stabilizes it. All right, this really gets kind of complicated, but nucleophilic substitution simply means that your process of your life moving back and forth through giving and taking of molecules in your blood 24 hours a day stops when you die, and then it has to become stable. And it does it by a, a, some of some 
molecule that has a lot of extra electrons moves in and substitutes itself for the things that would be coming and going and then it becomes which is called the leaving group and then it becomes stable and I'm going to show you in a heart which is made from opal you make it very simple all right once again little little chemistry but not much transition metal ion colors ions mean they're not neutral they have a charge now see this transition metals these blue ones right in this section right here these are the transition metals see transition metals and what do they do they're in your blood and as they move through your blood these extra electrons they're they're they need to give and take electrons or they don't need to but in order for them for your life to go you need to give and take molecules and that's what these things do when you die they have to stabilize when they stabilize a heart takes on if it can in a certain condition where opals are formed the heart will literally become these colors because it stabilizes by attaching to these particular metals which are here vanadium chromium iron the whole nickel cobalt all these iron these are your transition metals it's this little pincher that they have on them that is what's called um, a ligand and that pinches another molecule and drops it off where you need some oxygen or you need some glucose or you need whatever it is. And if something needs to be given up, it gives it up. When it drops it off, it has to take something with it. That's the way it works. Give and take. Transition. Now, let's see what happens to a heart when it dies if it has these chemistry available to it in a certain pH where it can bond and form its most stable configuration. Watch this. Okay, this is um, a cross section of a heart. And you can see all the little heart strings and the ventricle walls. And apparently this is like bypass or implant of something. Now, this just all looks like brown looking stuff. Well, you can see there's a transition between this color and this color. And all of these different things have different chemistry, which makes them more flexible, like the aorta can do this, boom, 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 boom. The whole outside has to have the fabric so that it can go. And COVID right now is attacking that fabric, and it's attacking the same fabric that has to do this all day long to your blood vessels, to your lungs, to your heart. That it's a collagen it's attacking. That's a whole other story. Now, this though is all different chemistry. And it's normally taken and giving from different types of of transition metals. However, when you die, it has to find somebody to find to stabilize itself or it just rots. Well, in the correct environment, it will find a partner to bond, to bond, to bond, to bond, to bond, to bond, to bond. And it will, every one of these molecules will say, hey, I need somebody, I need a zinc, I need some chromium, I need a copper, I need an iron. If I, if I want to stay stable, that's what I need. And in the correct watery situation, it's got to be watery, got aqueous water. It has to be that, and then it has to be a certain, I believe there's a, a bunch of different conditions. There has to be a certain pressurization. It has to be in a certain muddy environment, although there has to be almost 100% clear water with only, almost, only the transition metals passing through here so that eventually they will find a transition metal that makes them stable and here's what it looks like when it becomes stable all right just like i told you that every one of these different fabrics and these different tissues have different jobs which means they have different chemistry which means that when they become stable they want to find a transition metal to invade them, which is called, remember, I, I think I talked about this, nucleophilic invasion means an electrophile wants something with, a, one molecule wants to find another one, and it has like six extra electrons. It looks for something there has two electrons, and it, that makes it eight, you're good to go. 
this yellow maybe wants four extra electrons, that type of thing. So it's, it's, I need a couple of electrons. If you have them, I'll take you, and then I become blue. But guess what? If you can be invaded with the, like here, you see the green? That green has taken over where the blue is. It should be this color blue. You see the green? Normally, all of this is going to be this color blue. It wants to be that color blue. But where it's invading over here, there's some excessive transition metal color here. This green is taking over where the blue should be. And instead of making it this light color blue, it's making a, a separation between a dark blue and a dark green. And when you mix the two together, I guess they come out with this color. I'm not sure. There's, there's a lot to think about. But I can tell you one thing for sure. This thing died laying this way. And that is where the heavy metals, and metals are heavier than the plasma blood, which lifted to the top, and the metals went sunk to the bottom. That's where they are. That got cut in half. That, that, that is from opal conditions where as I talked about, the type of conditions they have to be in. Most of my stuff was in mud fossil conditions, in, in, in a wet mud, which is nothing more than flesh. Mud is nothing more than flesh. And the fleshy, bloody, bloody stuff it turned into like a, a red clay mud. And that's what these got impacted in. And then they took on that minerals, like the head I showed you, and then they become feldspar. That's feldspar too. That's what they'll tell you. But inside, there's no more feldspar. There's a rind, they call it, around the outside. I got things all over here that I could show you. But anyway, oh, you see here? There's always like a, that's feldspar. But inside, it's not feldspar anymore. They know this. They just don't know how to account for it. They just say, oh, well, that's this or that, that. And then they walk away because they really, you know, what are you going to say when you can't say something and you've been told to say something? Like, that's a bone. And they say, oh, no, it's not a bone. And they go, yeah, from Yale. Yale University, the top guy at Yale, Derek Briggs. No, that's just a, that's just a rock. And that was 10 years ago. It still won't budge. And, uh, and all the stuff I've had DNA certified and everything else still no, doesn't matter. They, once they told what to say, they can't can't change what they say even and, and they won't refuse to even examine it you know after dna and cat scans and, and, and specimens and anatomists and uh, you know that's not right especially when you're selling your information to the public for extreme amounts of money and as far as i'm concerned if they don't know it's wrong i can't imagine that at this point not having them be able to understand what they're saying is wrong but i, I have no influence there that's for sure anyway um that's nucleophilic substitution z case as she is closed